are mostly coming from the lesson. <gasps> oh, you could get lessons from me. <sighs> Look, if this is for you from Miss Annette, some of my friends that work here. She's already hired him to, I know, did she misspell your name? Thank you. Oh, did you? I, she said she, she hired you for some artwork, so that was exciting. Oh, bonus. So you're doing a cow and a fish. Oh, wow. Well, very good, very good. Okay, so we have verses to say, right, from last week? Um, I have my new verses here. Now, Miss Beth gave me the verse, and I don't see where I have it. Okay, so let's see if you guys remember what the verse is. Anyone have their token with them at all? No? Okay, who can tell me the reference? 107 verse 8? Yes. All righty. I'm sorry, I misplaced my verse myself. 107 verse 8. Oh, okay, that's right. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's have Isaac and Isaiah say it first. And eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Got it. Good. We have some Mars bars. Okay, brother, are you ready? Yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Good. That's it. Ivana, are you ready? Go ahead. Works. Good. So works to the children of men. Okay. Juliana, are you ready to say your verse? Didn't memorize it. Okay, Lucas. For? for his goodness and for his sorry children of uh, no children of men the children of men okay good try Lucas but that doesn't get a chocolate good try good try Okay, and were you here last week, boys? I can't remember. No, you weren't. Okay, were you with Grandma? Aww. Yes, you did. Okay, I have our new verses here, which we will look at in just a little bit, but not quite yet. Okay, so let me put this candy over here. You guys get so much candy. Do you eat a lot of candy throughout the week, or your parents are like, not too much candy? You eat a lot. Just have to be careful with your teeth, right? Mmm, yeah. yes. Okay. Let's see how well you remember this song. What do we spell? C H R. What's next? I S T I. Oh, fabulous. Okay. I am a. And then what's the next word? I have. And I have. I have Christ in my heart. I heard someone say it. I have Christ in my heart. That's exactly it. And I will live eternally. Kind of the same idea there, isn't it? And I will... Do you write on the board? Oh, I was making a number four. Do you write at the board on the board a lot at school? Or do you have more of like a smart board or anything like that? Oh, okay. I I use mine like I just don't use 
don't use it too much. Okay, you ready to sing the song with me? So this is eternally. Here we go. I am a C, I am a C H, I am a C H R I S T I A N, and I have C H R I S T in my H E A R T, and I will L I V E E T E R N A L L Y. That was the best I've heard you sing it so far. Do you boys know this song? Lots of spelling in here, isn't it? Hope, hopefully, you're good spellers. Okay. Let's try again, except for we're going to speed it up a little bit. Okay. Are you ready? Ready for the challenge? I am a C, I am a C H, I am a C H R I S T I A N, and I have C H R I S T in my A T A R T, and I will L I V E E T E R N A L L Y in the back, right? Okay, we will keep working on that one. And in just a moment, we are going to sing this song. I need to make it into a visual if we don't have it as a visual. You can share with Lucas. Do you know this song, Obedience? Do you know it? No. Obedience it is the very best way. You don't know it? Okay, well good. Then we can work on it together. You guys can share that one. So right now, how about you just put it on the floor underneath your chair? And then when I tell you to get it, we can get it. Au revoir. Sayonara. Okay, let's get the red one. You guys are a chatty little group this morning. So Ivana said that school ends for her early June. Is that the same for all of you? Early June and school's over? No, Lucas? Oh. Then end of this month? Oh, one week and you're done. Okay, what about you boys? Same? Just one more week? Okay. Juliana? Oh, this month? Whoa. Wow, you must be very excited. And boys? June. Early June, middle June, late June? Sometime in June, right? That is very exciting. And then summertime comes. As you get older, the summer goes quicker and quicker and quicker. But when you're little, summer feels like it lasts forever, which is very nice. And then that first day of school comes again. Okay, let's go ahead and sing one more song, and then we'll pray to begin our lesson. Okay, look what I found in here. I know, this one was in the filing cabinet. Oops, this one lost its little wooden piece, so I'll have to hold that one. Okay, but I think... Stop. We know this part, right? Stop. 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 Okay, now when we sing this part, you have to put your hand out. Like you're, a, what do you call them here? Like you're a traffic, what do you, what do you call them? A what? There you go, a conductor. Um, holding the sign, right? I see that a lot for the children. But here they wear bright, bright, bright outfits. So there's no mistaking who they are and what they're doing. Okay, are you ready? Stop. What? The stop, right? We got to do the stop. Okay, ready? Here we go. Stop and let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Stop and let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. He forgave my sin and he saved my soul. He cleansed my heart and he made me whole. So stop, stop, and let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Okay, now we need our go. Ready? Go. We got to do this though. Go and tell the story of the Christ of Calvary. Go. And tell the story of the Christ of Calvary. He will cleanse their hearts. He will make them whole. He'll forgive their sins and he'll save their souls. So go and tell the story of the Christ of Calvary. Okay, next time I think I'm going to have some helpers hold those. Because I was like... 
Okay, let's pray, and then we get to start our lesson after I ask a question. Ready? Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you so much for this Sunday. Thank you for our junior church class. Thank you for every girl and boy that's here today. Father, help us to be listeners of your word. Help us to understand the lesson and what the Bible is trying to teach us and what you want us to learn today. Father, please be with Pastor as he preaches. Uh, please help people to be listening. Please work in our hearts. We love you so much, Lord. We thank you for all of your goodness and all of your blessings, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, since I got out this candy, well, these ones are sour, I'm going to give two to anyone who can tell me the gospel in a nutshell. Uh-oh. Uh, got to rewind your brain to when we learned it. dun 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 no, 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 no. Do you remember, Lucas? Okay, only one person at a time. You want to try it, Lucas, or you want to listen? Everyone's a sinner. There's a price. Yes. Jesus paid that price. That's it. Brilliant. Okay, some sour candies for you. Juliana? Everyone's a sinner. There's a price on this, and Jesus paid that price. What are you going to do about it? Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Go ahead. Everyone's a sinner. There's a price on sin. Jesus paid the price. What are you going to do about it? Yes. Good, 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 good. Do you remember it? Can you say it for me? Uh, oh, you got to sit up. I got to hear you. Mm-hmm. Good. Question? Oh, good job. Very proud of you. Very proud of you. Okay, go ahead. Good. Ivana, do you remember? No? Okay. So it's not this time, Mishan. Now, on to our lesson. On to our lesson. Didn't you enjoy the song that the men just sang? Yeah. That was a really good song. Okay, so, boys and girls, for this lesson today, you may have to go like this. And stretch your neck. You know why? Because I don't want the lesson to go whoosh over your head. So you might have to stretch your neck a little bit to learn with me today. Okay, so I'm going to write a word on the board. If you don't know how to spell, that's okay. Do you all, under, do you all, uh, sorry, can you all read cursive? Yeah. yeah. yeah Ivana can't, okay. Yeah. I write cursive in school. Oh my, that is not very nice handwriting. Okay, now, let's settle down and let's listen. First question for you, if I ask you what does this word mean, what comes to your mind? Just tell me what you think about uh, Lucas had his hand up first. The structure and the personality of someone. Wow, very fancy definition. Okay, so he said the structure and the personality of someone. Okay, don't forget that. Um, what comes to your mind? Is there any other way we know the word character? Like if you're reading a book? A black cloud? Is that a character in a show or something? Oh, your is your brain foggy today? Okay, go ahead. Uh, Did you have your hand up? Yeah, I have. The same oh, same thing, Juliana. No. Have you ever read a book that's talking about one person specifically? It's maybe the story of their life or something like that. They're the main character. Would we say that right? Okay, but Juliana, you have something else to add. Okay, so actually we're going to go right back to Lucas's definition because that's how we're going to talk about this word. So you probably heard someone say that person has good character or that person has bad character. Have you heard that before? Okay, so we would say that it's an attribute or something that distinguishes someone from someone else. Okay, in other words, character has to do with who a person is. Just kind of exactly what Lucas was saying, right? Okay? Who a person is because of the habits they formed. Okay? So your character isn't just your actions. Okay? 
your character is who you are as a person. Does that make sense so far? Okay. Now, I used a word, and that word was habits. Your character is who you are because of the habits you have formed. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. So what is character? You want to say it out loud? Character is who you are because of the habits you have formed. Now, Juliana, personality and character is a little bit different. Do you know that you were born with your personality? Yeah. Some people are a little bit shy and quiet, right? Other people are, like Juliana, bubbly and talkative. That's your personality. That's who you were born to be. Your character is something that you can shape a little bit, okay? You can build up good character or you can have bad character. So it's a little bit different than just your personality. Okay, now where should we look if we're looking for a perfect example of perfect character? Where should we look? Does Lucas have perfect character? No. Does Miss Sean have perfect character? No. Um, think of your best friend. Do they have perfect character? No. There's only one place we can look for perfect character. What is it? The Bible. Because of who? Jesus. Jesus is our example of absolutely perfect character. Okay? And actually, um, in 1 Peter 2.21, the Bible says that he left us an example so that we can follow his steps. So if we're saying, where should I look to find someone that has great character, someone I should imitate? It's Jesus. And not just that, but he is the source of everything in our life. Anything we need to know, we can find the principle right here in the Bible. Okay? Just like you said, God's word. That's how we find perfect examples. Now let's switch gears to habits. We've talked about character, right? Who a person is because of the habits they formed. Now, let's switch over to the word habits. I think everyone would understand what that word means, a habit. Again, we could say someone has good habits or someone has bad habits. So what do you think of when you hear the word habit? Lucas? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. It's a bad habit, isn't it? Yes, okay, so a habit is something that we do most naturally, and we do it so much, or we have done it so much, that we don't even think about doing it anymore, okay? So, for example, when I wake up in the morning, one of my habits is to brush my teeth. I just, when I wake up, it's not the first thing I do, but I don't have to stand around and look in the mirror and say, should I brush my teeth today? Hmm. I don't even think about it. I get my toothbrush, I put my toothpaste on it, and I just brush my teeth. Okay, I've done it so many times. I don't even think about it anymore. So think of when you get up in the morning or you're getting ready for school, what is something that you do? You don't even think about it. It's just a normal part of your morning because you've done it over and over and over and over again. Can you think of any? Juliana? Go back to sleep. Oh, sometimes we have the habit of pushing the, turning our alarm off, right? Pushing snooze, they call it, and then going back to sleep. Sometime or another, we'll have to break that habit, unless it's vacation. Okay, help me with something else that you do. Do you have to think about eating breakfast in the morning? No. Not really. You wake up, your tummy kind of reminds you that you're hungry, but yeah. you just go eat breakfast. Who packs a lunch for school? Okay, so you may pack it yourself, you may have someone pack it, but probably you don't have to think about it. Now you may think of what you want to eat, but you know, you just have to pack your lunch, okay? Um, what about when you come home from school? Does anyone have a habit that they've developed? I know when we came home from school, we were usually very hungry, but we weren't supposed to spoil our dinner, so we would have a small snack. I mean, I wouldn't even think about it. Just come home, mom, can I have a snack? Yes, okay. Uh, what about you? When you come home from school, tell me one of your habits. You fall asleep? 
Oh, you're telling about one of his habits on the way home from school, maybe? Oh, you're so tired from the day. Juliana? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, the boom, boom, boom. Lucas? Same. Get out of those kind of. Yes, yes. Get out of those uncomfortable school clothes and get into something more relaxing. Okay, so even though habits become something we don't think about, it actually takes work to form good habits. Okay? Um, I was reading something, they said it actually takes 30 days to do something over and over and over until it becomes a habit. So you have to teach yourself good habits, right? And then someone else said, if you eat olives nine times, if you eat an olive nine times, you will begin to like olives. Now, I don't know in here who likes olives or who doesn't like them, but the idea is just you do something over and over until it becomes your habit, okay? Um, so it's work to build good habits. What about the bad habits that we have? It's really not that much work to have bad habits because naturally we're already sinners, right? So if we have the habit of lying, always arguing with our friends or with our siblings, disobeying our parents, stealing, cussing, those are already things that are easier for us to do because we're sinners. So it takes work to build good habits, but if you're lazy about trying to build any habits in your life, then you're just gonna do those bad things and you're gonna do them more and more and more and then they become very hard to break, okay? All right, so guess what? If you do the work early in your life of building good habits, then you can please the Lord and you can keep yourself from some heartbreak later on in life. Okay, now we've talked about character. What is character? Who you are because of the habits you have formed. What is the habit? What is the habit? Yes, something you do over and over and over again and you don't have to think about it. Okay, where do our habits come from? Mm-hmm. And actually, the Bible says it comes from our heart. In Proverbs 23, 7, the Bible says, As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So, we are what we think. We do what we think about doing. We say what we think about saying. Okay? So, why do you think the way that you do about anything? Because you've taught yourself to think that way. Okay, now I'm going to use an illustration. You guys like illustrations? It's like an example of something. Okay, by using an object. Okay, here is one piece of thread. Okay, so each thought that we have makes a tiny connection in our brain like this thread. Okay, each thought we have. Every thought that you have that is similar, close to this thought, because makes it stronger, okay, by adding another thread. So let's give an example. You have a thought that says, my parents don't trust me. Okay, that's a thought that you have. Okay, so now you've got a thread, right? Now then you might think, oh, my parents are so controlling. Okay, now is it just a thread anymore? No. Nope, it's a little bit stronger. And then, then you have a thought, I'm never allowed to do things that other kids can do. Now you're thinking about your parents. It's, it's the wrong thinking, isn't it? But it's starting to get stronger and stronger. And then you have a thought, I hate when people tell me what to do. Now we're sinners, so we have to fight these kind of thoughts, don't we? We can't act like we never have, have these thoughts. Okay, now it's not just a single thread. It's becoming more like a rope, right? And then, I wish my parents were like my friend's parents who let them do whatever they want. Now look at this. Now you don't have a single thread anymore, but you have a rope. And now that way of thinking, those thoughts that you've been having again and again, now they have a very strong pull on your thinking and in your mind. 
because you've built them. You've made this thread now into a rope. So do you see how important it is that you're very careful with what you think? Okay. What you think about is what you end up doing. Now, I want to give you an example. Have you heard about the shootings they've had in America? Just in the past two weeks, they've had two major shootings. They've had one in Buffalo, New York, and then a recent one down in Texas. I thought this was a really good example of how thinking, what we think, becomes what we do. So this young man, he had said many times that he was going to kill someone, which we know is terrible. It's awful. But that's what he was thinking. And then he thought about it more, and he thought about it more. He was telling people that's what he was going to do. Then he got on social media and he said, I'm going to kill my grandmother. <gasps> it's bad. And then he did. He was thinking about it. He was saying it, and then he did it. Afterwards, he shot at two other people. Then he got back on social media and said that he was on his way to a school to shoot at children. Then he, so you probably heard the news, then he went to that school and he shot 21 people which I believe 19 of them were actually killed. Okay, so how does someone get to the point where they do a crime like that? It's not because they just woke up one morning and said, you know what, today I'm going to do such and such. No, he thought about it, and he thought about it, and he thought about it, and he talked about it, and then he planned it, and then he did it. So boys and girls, what we think is who we are, and it's who we become. We have to be very careful. Okay, now, I say all that, but we need to remember that God's word is very powerful. And if our thinking is wrong, if we're not thinking in a way that pleases God, God's power is enough to change our thinking and to make it right. In fact, the Bible says that Christ has given us the power to cast down any wrong imaginations that we have, any wrong thinking. And... The Bible says that Christ can give us the power to hold every thought captive and then for it to turn into a right thought. So God does not want us to be stuck in the habit of wrong thinking. Okay. Now, there's lots of other bad habits besides just the way they think. Lucas said, picking your nose. Now, that's kind of like a, I mean, it's not really that funny, but it can be funny, right? It's kind of a funnier habit to think about. But there's other things that we can do that are serious. And we've got to make sure we ask God to help us to break those habits. Okay. Now I want to mention something else. So we've talked about character, which is what? Who we are because of the habits we have formed. And what are habits? Things we do without thinking. We do them over and over and over. Okay. Now. I've been talking about how important it is to have good character. But I do want to mention this. Let's think about Lucas. I always like to pick on Lucas, don't I? Not in a bad way, though. Okay, let's think about Lucas. Lucas says, I'm really going to focus and concentrate on building good character. You know, you could have the best character of any person you know. You could have the best character of anyone in the world. But you could be lost for eternity. So what we have to understand is there's a difference between being a good person and being a saved person, right? So just because you have good character, does that mean you're going to heaven when you die? No. There's a difference between having good character and being born again and having your sins forgiven, okay? So we need to remember that at the very, the very end goal is to have good character so we can please God. Okay, not so that we can go to heaven. There's a difference. Okay, now we're going to talk about a special character trait. And I'm going to write one more big word on the board. So we have character, we have habits. And this word is found in the song I passed out to you today. Obedience. Yes. Okay, obedience. So we talked about character because this is the first character trait 
we're going to focus on in the next few weeks obedience and, you, and then you start to say oh no Michelle, not obedience uh oh okay so we're going to tie this into a bible story here in just a minute but obedience is doing what you're told with a happy heart ah that's the catch isn't it it's easy to do what you're told juliana go make your bed juliana can go and make her bed with a happy heart she's glad to obey her mom or juliana can still do what she's told but the whole time oh i don't want to make my bed why don't i want to make my bed is that real obedience no no you're doing it but you're not having a pleasant spirit about it and god always looks at our heart he's very concerned with the type of spirit that we have okay can you think of any other word that would be close to this word obedience if someone says you should obey your parents what's another word you could use besides obey listen. we call it synonyms okay to listen good so obedience has the idea of yes listening but then also doing right okay did you think of one lucas listening okay what about the one the word submission do you know that word the bible says several times that we need to submit ourselves to god we need to recognize his authority and then do what god says do you know every person in this whole world has to submit to someone right isn't that true is there anyone that can just say i'm not listening to one single person over me i'm doing my own thing no because one, everyone's supposed to submit to God, and then children are supposed to submit to their parents, right? Workers are supposed to submit to their bosses. If they don't, they'll just get fired, right? Wives are supposed to submit to their husbands, right? So everyone has someone that they have to submit to and that they have to obey, okay? Now, let's look at our memory verse. We're going to talk a little bit about obedience from this verse right here. It's 1 John 2, 3. Okay, you're welcome. So this is the verse I want you to try to work on memorizing for next week. Here you go, here you go. Okay, read it with me, ready? 1 John 2, 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. First John 2, th sorry, chapter 2, verse 3. Is this talking about obedience? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. How do we know that we really have a relationship with God? If we keep his commandments. How do other people know that we are a child of God? If we keep his commandments commandments okay um and another verse in the bible is john 14 15 it says if you love me keep my commandments okay now we're going to talk about someone in the bible who kept god's commandment okay a specific commandment this is nebuchadnezzar and oh my this looks like isaac when he wakes up in the morning very serious very grumpy I'm just teasing. So this is King Nebuchadnezzar, and he is a ruler over the land um, of Babylon. Okay, And this king was very high and mighty on himself. I mean, he believed that he should be worshipped as a god. And he wanted everyone to worship him. So he picked a day to have this celebration. He invited all the other people powerful people in his kingdom and he said i want you all to come to this celebration of me <laughs> he was celebrating himself so to do that in order to do that he had this huge statue made of himself so the size of the statue would be like a 10-story building have you ever seen a, a skyscraper before yeah. yeah 10 stories up high that was the height of this statue and it was overlaid with pure gold so for a very long distance away you could see king nebuchadnezzar's statue so we invited all these people to come and here we have musicians they're making the day extra special and this was the command of the king ready he said when you hear the music play 
I want all of you to bow down your face to the earth and worship me. Now, are we supposed to worship anyone but God? No. No, we're not supposed to. That would be breaking his commandment, right? Mm. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay, so guess what? There were three men there that loved God, and they heard what the king's commandment was. But they said, wait a minute. It is written that we should not obey, or I'm sorry, worship anyone but God. So here the music played. They had all these instruments, all these gifted musicians to make this a very special occasion. And guess what? Everybody bowed down to that statue except for three men. Do you remember their names? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So do you think they kind of stood out in the crowd? Literally, right? They were standing and everybody else was bowing. Now at that point, I think my knees would be trembling a little bit. Well, it was very obvious that they didn't bow down. And then they were spied out from some, by some of the king's men. And they went over to the king and they said, Oh, king, you are worthy of worship. Didn't you say that when the musicians played, you wanted everyone to bow down and worship you? Well, guess what? There are three men in the crowd who did not bow down to worship you. The king was furious. He was furious. So he called these men to him, and he said, I'm going to give you a second chance. When you hear the music this time, you will bow down and worship me. Oh, boy. So obviously he was very upset with them for not obeying his command. But they said, we will not bow down to you. And furthermore, the king had threatened to throw them into a fiery furnace, probably the same furnace that was used to make this gold on the statue. He had said, if you don't do it, then I will throw you into this furnace. And they said, if you do that, we believe that God is able to deliver us. And even if he decides not to deliver us from this furnace, we still will not break his commandment. Did they choose to obey God yeah. rather than obeying a king? Yeah. King has a lot of power, doesn't he? But God has more power than that. So the king commanded his men to turn up the furnace seven times hotter than what it was before. And in fact, when the men were bound and cast into the furnace, the soldiers were actually burnt up themselves because it was so hot, even at the entrance of the furnace. Now, the men were thrown in, and the king came to watch, but you probably know this part of the story, don't you? Yeah. Only the very ropes that bound them were burnt, and they realized they were not being burnt at all. So it seems like because of their obedience, God miraculously delivered them from being burnt alive. And when the king saw it, he said, wait a minute, didn't we throw only three men into the fire? But I see four, and one of them looks like the Son of God. Jesus was with them during this time in the furnace, and he delivered them. When they came out of the furnace, not one hair was singed. There wasn't one burn mark on their skin. They were completely normal and fine, just as before they were thrown into the furnace. Because of that, because they kept God's commandment, because they obeyed, when they came out, the king said, wow, you must really serve a living and a true God. So did they show that they know God by keeping his commandments? Wow, what an amazing, amazing story. Okay, so you tell me, how was the king's commandment different than God's commandment? What was the king asking them to do? Yeah, to worship, yes, to worship something besides him. Okay, now what if the king had just said, what if the king had given them a different commandment that didn't go against God? Should they have, command, or should they have obeyed him? Yes, because the Bible says we are supposed to submit to those who rule over us. 
as long as it doesn't go against the Bible. Okay, what do you think gave them the courage to obey God and say no to a king? What do you think gave them the courage to do that? God strengthened them, and probably the promises and the commandments of his word came to their minds. Okay, you know, there's a promise in Isaiah where it says that if we walk through the fire, we will not be burned. Okay, because God is with us. Okay, then... They had a choice to make, didn't they? And you and I have a choice to make about obedience. We have to decide every single day, am I going to obey sin or am I going to obey God? Okay. Now, let's have just a few review questions before we sing that song that I gave you. Someone tell me, what is character? Back to that first word again. Character is? Who you are because because of the habits you have formed. Okay, that was close to getting candy, but not quite. Is your personality the same as your character? Not really. Not really. You're born with your personality. Okay? Character is something you can work on. We have weak points in our personality. We can work on those. But personality and character isn't quite the same thing. Okay. Um, tell me one example of a bad habit that you can replace with a good habit. Oh, Ivana, can you think of one? You think about it for just a second. I'll come back to you. Juliana? Bad habit that we can replace with a good habit. Uh, mm. Yeah. What should we replace that with? Right, right. Yes, because God in his word says that we should treat others the way that we want to be treated, right? We can use God's word to help us work on those bad habits. Okay, help me. Yes. Yes. God says that he wants us to have truthful lips, not lying lips. Lucas? No, I took the word from our lesson today. Keep his commandments. Children, obey your parents. Okay, go ahead. A bad habit, we can replace with a good habit. Oh, I can't hear you, bud. Boys, can you quiet down in the back for just a second? Go ahead. Oh, he, he gave an answer, but I didn't hear him. Go ahead. Mm, okay, and so what should we do instead of that? Yes. Very good job. Okay, Ivana, did you think of one? A bad habit that we can replace with a good habit. Mm, maybe you could try to think of one of your bad habits. We definitely all have them. And we can pray and ask God to help us break them and replace them with good habits. Did you think of one? Stealing. And maybe even more than just not stealing is learning how to give to others rather than just yeah. take for ourselves. Okay, anyone else? Ivana, did you think of one? Oh, if, if we disobey, then we should learn to obey. Okay. There we go. What about laziness? If you don't wake up in the morning and make your bed... Or try, try to, when you come home, organize your school things instead of throwing them all over the house. You should try to learn to be a little organized, right? That's a bad habit we can replace with a good one. Okay, finish this saying for me. What you think is... Good. What you think is what you do. What you think is who you are, right? Okay, one more. This is a question for you to ask your own heart. Okay? Do you have a heart that is willing to obey? Yes, yes. Well, one of the ways to give yourself a little test is to ask yourself, how do I obey my parents at home? Because, <coughs> excuse me, when we're at home, we are our most true selves. We're the most comfortable. We let our personality come out more. 
And so when your parents ask you to obey, do you do what they say with a happy spirit? Or do you grumble and complain and talk back? That's probably a sign that you have not learned to obey. If we had all of your parents in this room and we lined them up and we said, Miss Nellie, how does Julianna obey at home? What would your parents say? Well, it could be just stating the facts. Miss Renata, how does Lucas obey at home? Okay, so the only point I'm making is that you could probably gauge how you obey by thinking of how your parents would answer that question. Okay, you've listened very, very well today. Thank you for that. Let's sing our obedience song. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, ready? Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Doing exactly what the Lord commands, doing it happily. Action is the key, do it immediately, joy you will receive. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Spell it out now. O B E D I E N C E. <clears throat> Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Okay, here's the next verse. Ready? We want to live pure. We want to live clean. We want to do our best. Sweetly submitting to authority, leaving to God the rest. Walking in the light, keeping our attitude right on the narrow way. For if we believe the word we receive, we always will obey. We'll stop right there. If you can read your verse to me, please. I would like to give you a treat. All right, we will do. We will we'll do We'll do people who have pets first. Who has a pet? Lucas. And hereby we do. Mm -hmm. Keep his commandments. Good. First John. Mm -hmm. That's it. Juliana, you do not have a pet. Does anyone else have a pet? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Juliana, for this. Thank you for this. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. First John chapter 2, verse not to be confused with the book of John, right? This is 1 John, and there's also a 2 John, and there's also a 3 John. Go ahead. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, go ahead. And hereby we, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Mm hmm. Okay, Ivana. Mm -hmm. Hereby. Mm -hmm. Yay. Chapter two. Good. Okay, boys. You want to try to say the verse? Are you keeping it from him? If he can't see it, then he probably won't be able to say it. Oh, good job, bud. Okay, are you ready to say it? Go ahead. Oh, you okay to eat that? Okay. Good. 
Okay, who will try to remember to study this verse so you can say it next week? Okay, it sounds like we are ready to be dismissed. So we will see you next Sunday. I mean, I'll see you this afternoon too, but next Sunday for class. Yes. Yes. I'll see you in the evening. Yes, ma'am. And Claire will see you too. <laughs> Julian, you're so cute. Okay, au revoir. Bye, bye, bye.